hit record. So hey everyone, I am going to um, I've, I've do this as often as I can to make sure that everyone has an opportunity. We can have a really cool big old Q&A, as I said. Um, and especially with this big group that's coming in right now, headed into AP Obsession on Monday. And hey, Eric, I'm glad you're here. Just met Eric, right? We just, that, that's just what I was talking about earlier, Eric, before you jumped on. It's just so cool how, how we, uh, how all the different people and how we've connected. Beachbody graciously gave me Eric, not like all of him, but um, allowed me the opportunity to be his coach. One of the things that they do with the business is um, when you're a coach and you've earned certain um, rank levels, if you will, then the people who come to Beachbody that don't already have a coach, um, one of the things that they really pride themselves on and have since the very, very, very beginning is that um, they realize that another great workout program and another great diet is not helping people to stay consistent forever. <clears> that <throat> people are yo-yoing just like I did for so many years. And so way back, way back at the beginning before there were coaches and this coaching network, um, it was, you know, it was just Beachbody producing workout programs. Um, what happened was they sort of accidentally stumbled onto the fact that, hey, we're doing all these infomercials, but also there's a lot of word of mouth going on. We've got a lot of raving fans. We've got a lot of really happy, loyal customers who are telling everyone they know about what's happening to them. And, um, and so they were approached about, you know, network marketing or multi-level marketing and would you consider it? You've got all these customers who are really... <laughs> you know, that's what they're doing. Would you like to give back to them? And they said no several times and because they just thought there was a yuck around network marketing. And then they realized, hey, we don't have to do it in the yucky way. We can do it the right way. And that's when they finally said yes. Carl Deichler, who is the CEO of Beachbody and John Cogden, who's the president, said yes. And they mapped it out. And basically coaches were are our raving fans that's really what we are and and so then as it evolved they were they basically of course the dog is going to bark right max come max come max sorry. sorry so basically what that evolved was well we want every single person who buys a beach body product to have coach they want i want them to have support we know that it's going to take more than great workouts and a great nutrition plan to keep people consistent. Max, right here, right here. See, I'm going to be mean to him just like I'm mean to all of you. Um, and so what they do is anyone who orders anything or gets started with Peach by doesn't already have a coach, they give us coaches these wonderful new customers to help. And that's how I met Eric. So that was a very long way of saying that's how I met Eric. <laughs> But it's really cool as I look at all of your faces to think of how I met everyone and um, and Robin happens to be a beautiful bride of a guy I went to high school with. So it's just all kinds of different facets of where we came together. So here's what I wanted to do tonight <clears throat> and just give a little bit of background first and then we, were, we are going to get into some big old Q&A. Um, when Autumn Calabrese came on to the scene, if you will, with Beachbody, she was discovered because she had these um, containers and she was out there trying to market herself that she had a great way for people to understand portion control and it all started from her being at lunch with a friend and Autumn said I ordered a salad and my friend ordered a salad my salad was a very clean beautiful you know whatever three four five hundred calorie salad and my friend's salad was about three thousand calories and my friend really thought she was doing good. And I realized that people are confused. And so I wanted to help people to understand that you could live healthy and eat really good, awesome, beautiful food and reach your goals and stay on track and, and be a healthy person and then actually have good, healthy, yummy food to eat. And so she started to teach her friend. And as she was teaching her friend, she was saying, you know, just, just measure this much and this much. And technically, behind the colors of the container, they're actually measurements. So two of the containers are like a half a cup. One of the containers is like th a third of a cup. You know, another, they all actually are, are, forget the colors, they actually are measurements, if you will. 
But she's like, let me add some color to it so it helps people to wrap their head around it. Well, Beachbody, Carl Deichler heard about this and he was like, oh my gosh, I need this. And so they were actually just gonna hire her and buy, or I'm, I'm sorry, not hire her. They were actually gonna just uh, buy the rights to her portion thing that she was doing. And they wound up having a talk and, and, and realized that Autumn was also a trainer. She was, um, uh, she was a professional dancer for many years, got injured, became a trainer. And then she did fitness competitions. And he said, how about if we take your container system that you created and have you build an, a, a workout program around it? And that's how 21 Day Fix became a program that came out. And so the container and the nutrition plan was attached to the 21 Day Fix workouts as a, as a program that released. Well, it took off like crazy. People really, really embraced oh my gosh, I get this. This is how much I can have each day. And they were getting amazing results. And they found this simple little color container system, an easy way for them to do it. So Beachbody said, well, wait a minute. Why don't we take the system, this, this portion control system, and just have everyone, no matter what your workout program is, attach it to that workout program. And that's the meal plan, if you will. So for, mo for most of our workout programs, Portion fix meal plan, that's what they call it now, is the um, recommended nutrition plan. There are a few exceptions like Body Beast, which is a very specific bulk building kind of program, has its own little gig. But by and large, the portion fix meal plan was what was adopted. And again, a lot of people um, have for years followed it, myself included. I follow it, my husband follows it. And, uh, and what happens over time is, you know, the containers still sit on my counter but I use them less and less and less because I just know what it looks like, right? I just know what a yellow portion looks like. I started to learn what the red portion looks like, you know? I, I, and so you, it's really a learning tool uh, and they really are more measuring tools than they are travel containers. Now they have lids and you can certainly put your food in there, put the lid on and take it with you right in the colored container. But most people will put the food in there, measure it, dump it on a plate, put the food in there, measure it, put it in another container that they're going to take to work or whatever. Um, when they first come in the mail, most people say, oh, dear God, I'm going to starve to death because they're under the impression that they can only fill one container in each of the color categories a day until they open the book and they learn and they understand that they can have, you know, four greens and five reds or whatever, 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 based on their plan. And so that's a little bit of history on that. And one of the things that I will tell you, I know most of you know my story that I was a chronic yo-yoer on the wagon, off the wagon for about 13 years of my life. Um, it was very, very frustrating. And in 2008, July of 2008 is when I was introduced to the Beachbody system. And, um, and it was actually from my personal trainer at the gym. And she lost a client because she had me fall in love with this over here, but she didn't care because she really wanted me to reach, reach my goals and feel good and stop the yo-yo craziness. One of the things that she said to me that I'll never forget, it burns a tattoo in my brain and I want you to embrace this as well. I really feel like it's one of the things that once I fully understood this and embraced this, it changed my mindset, which changed my lifestyle. Um, is that a, a lot of people fail because they're like, I can't possibly go on another diet. I don't want to go on a diet. You can help me, Mary, but don't put me on a diet. You have to understand something. You're not on a diet. We have a diet. Everything that we consume, everything that we put in our mouth is our diet, good, bad, or otherwise. <laughs> so once you stop thinking about this going and being on a diet concept, uh, and you realize that what you're doing is just your way of eating, it's just your lifestyle, okay? And you're not on a diet. You sort of like, your shoulders come down and you sort of breathe a little easier because you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I will tell you that, you know, most of the people that were surrounding me in my life when I lived in Maryland and when I moved to Florida, um, they all were going on diets. Like that was their mentality. That's what they did. Everything was this temporary thing. They were going to go on a diet for 30 days um, or whatever, whatever. Until I met my sister-in-law, my second marriage, my last marriage, I like to call it because I ain't doing it again. I'm going girls or cats next. That's, I'm, I'm done with you guys. <laughs> this was going to last forever. He's a good guy. Um, I met my sister-in-law and she was the first person that I ever had in my life where 
this whole healthy lifestyle thing was so intrinsic. She didn't think about it every day and stress about it every day. She wasn't like, what am I going to eat today? Oh my gosh, it's got to be healthy. Oh my gosh, 85, 90% clean. Da, 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 da. How, what am I going to do my workout? How am I going to do that? What kind of workout am I going to do? Am I going to like it? Am I going to sweat too much? Huh. She just day in and day out, I would see Julie just living this healthy life. And guess what? So were her kids who were like seven and eight <laughs> and whatever. And my son was like, you know, eating corn dogs and whatever. And I was like, and I kept saying to her, Julie, please help me understand. So I stopped this crazy yo-yo madness. How, what do you do? Like, how is it that this is so a part of your life? And she said, well, you know, I eat healthy and I work out. <laughs> and I literally like, what it's, I, I asked her several times that she answered me the same way. And I was like, like, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> like, I get that part of it. I knew the what, but I didn't know the how. I knew what I needed to do. I just didn't know how to do it all the time <laughs> and stop stopping. So I finally, when I was introduced to all this whole beach body thing, I, I, it all finally started to click. And I finally realized that I didn't have to eat perfect. I wasn't on a diet and I just needed to find workouts that I actually enjoyed so that I would freaking do them. And then fourth and probably the most important is probably number one. I had to surround myself with people who noticed and cared when I didn't show up. I needed people that were actually going to respectfully tap me on the shoulder and say, Hey, I don't see you. I haven't seen you in a while. You okay? What's going on? Cause guess what? The gym didn't really do that. <laughs> they didn't really call me and notice when I wasn't there or whatever. And I was paying all this money and I don't put down gyms. Cause let me tell you something. If you go to the gym and the gym's working for you, absolutely hundred percent thumbs up. But I just meet too many people in my life who have pay all this money for a gym membership and they just don't go. So that to me is a waste, right? I want you to find what works for you. So this whole accountability piece is definitely the critical piece. And so when I actually became a coach and started to do this as a business, I was like, you know what? This isn't, working with me is not just another workout program. And if that's really what you feel like it is, then I just need you to exit stage right because you can Google all day long and get free workouts. You don't need to pay me or Beachbody or anybody else for another workout program, right? And you also can get free nutrition online as well. So, you know, our nutrition plans are great, but you know, if that's all you're really looking for, it's just not going to be enough. What you're going to get with me is the accountability piece. That person who notices and care cares when you don't show up. And the person who's going to tap you on the shoulder, very respectfully holds you accountable. Okay. And so that is to me what made the huge difference in 2008. It's the reason why I decided to start learning about the business and build the business because I really felt like, hey, you can call me a coach, you can call me a business owner, you can call me anything you want, but I'm an accountability partner to you. That's really what it boils down to. So we got great workouts, and we got great nutrition plan, but I need you to understand the power of the group. And as silly as it seems that it's on our phone in a little app and everyone's like, yeah, well, what, what's the big deal of checking in? It's a big deal. And those people who go in every single day and check in, been with me for years, and they've stayed on the bus for years. And so I just want you to understand that you know, again, work, working with me goes way beyond a cool new workout program. And I really pride myself on, I'm not just here to teach you something for 21 days or 30 days or 80 days with 80 day obsession. You got me forever. I hope that doesn't make you mad, but this whole healthy lifestyle thing is forever. This isn't just five days, 80 days, 21 days, whatever. And then what? Cause then what, what you stop and you go right back to where you were before. That's what I did over and over and over again. So I'm saying that very specifically because I want you to understand where I feel like I fit into your life. I am seriously very serious about making sure you figure out this whole healthy lifestyle thing in moderation so that these healthy habits will become intrinsic to you. They were never intrinsic to me. I wasn't raised that way. I was raised on Mrs. Paul's fish sticks and macaroni and cheese. My parents are amazing, but they just didn't teach me healthy food and they didn't work out, right? So that wasn't intrinsic to me. I can tell you now, you ask anybody who knows me and my husband, all of this is intrinsic to me. It's, it's just like brushing my teeth. I, 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 with the workouts, the eating right, it, the accountability, the checking in, it's just normal and it's natural and it's not as hard as it used to be. And so I want to help you to build that and I have done it for hundreds of people and I know I can for you as well. So that's really the, the biggest thing I want you to understand.
And again, I'm saying all that because with this huge influx of people coming in to do the next round of 80 day obsession, you desperately have to listen to me and know that it goes way beyond these 80 days. Okay. Yes. We're going to stay laser focused for 80 days and you're going to do this round. Maybe your first round, it might be your second round. Um, but please know that it doesn't stop there. You're with me forever. You're going to continue. We're going to be talking about what your next is as you near the end. And we will, this is your family. This is going to be your deal now. This is how it works. And I pray that you're as successful at building that intr those intrinsic habits like I was as well. However, <laughs> what I always tell people, even before 80 day obsession came out, when they start to work with me, I'm like, look, in order for you to truly build these habits, and it's the same thing I had to do as well with P90X way back in 2008. I want you to take this first round, whether it's 21 day fix or 80 day obsession or whatever core to force, I don't care, whatever it is that you're doing, what a lot of you here are gonna be doing 80 day obsession, but even if you're on, listening to my voice and you're on this call and you're not, always take the first round and do it spot on, to the T, by the books. 100% clean, 100% doing the workouts. Don't miss a damn thing. Don't miss a rep. Don't miss one rep in your workouts. I don't care if you have to push, pause, breathe, get a drink of water, whatever you gotta do. Finish your workouts, finish your reps, and do everything to a team. Why is that so important on this first round? Because again, that's what's gonna start to build. And when you do your first round of any of these programs like that, literally like, print take your take your um workout calendar and tack it to the wall and put big old x marks all over it like get get crazy ocd like i am it, the uh, the feeling of accomplishment when you have x marks all over that at the very end and you know in your heart you gave it everything you've got first point you're going to have wicked results like crazy results number one you're going to be so either close or have reached your goals but more than that more than the physical thing, the, the pride and the confidence that you're gonna have gained and the way you're going to build those habits so that they're, they're so much more intrinsic than they were on day one is just going to help you lead right into that lifestyle till the day you die. And so that's why I really want you, as you lead into 80 Day Obsession, yes, when 80 Day Obsession's over, I'm gonna teach you how to take all this and bring it down a notch or notch and a half, and figure out how to live your life in moderation so that it is sustainable forever because perfect isn't sustainable forever. It's not. That's what caused me to yo-yo because I kept getting frustrated because I couldn't be perfect with my diet and with my workouts. And so I would just quit. I was just like, forget it. I'll quit. Uh, and so that's how we want, right? We want to make sure that we're doing stuff that's in moderation. So on a normal day for me, outside of this 80-day obsession first round that I did, on a Friday night when my husband and I went to dinner, we would go out to dinner, I'd have a cocktail or two. Never usually more than two or else I really was a mess. <laughs> I'm a lightweight and I'm a cheap date. Um, and Saturday night, maybe the same, but I didn't drink alcohol on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I just did it. You know, I just, it was important to me to, to feed my body nice and healthy. And I didn't really need to have a cocktail every day of the week. So uh, I also, my nutrition was probably somewhere between 90 and 95% clean. You know, I have pizza on occasion. I had burger on occasion, you know, everything on occasion. That's, that's how you enjoy life and keep it in moderation so it's sustainable forever. So I hope that makes sense. Leading into 80 day obsession, or if this is your first round, whatever you're doing, we're gonna talk about perfection because that's really what I want you to do and I told you why. So I just wanna make sure I clarified that so you weren't like, well, hell's bells. How am I gonna <laughs> never, ever, ever have a beer again? Um, as my friend Eric said, or never, ever, ever have a pizza again, because I think I'd shoot somebody if I couldn't have pizza again. No, that's not how life works. Um, okay, so here's the deal with, again, any program you're starting, but especially with 80 Day Obsession. Let's start with pictures, measurements, and sort of this whole before piece, okay? I know you don't want to take them. I didn't either, you know? And I, was, and I wasn't looking to lose weight, so it wasn't like my before pictures or like I was, you know, 100 pounds overweight or anything like that, but I still knew what my trouble area was. I still still knew what my goal was, and you never saw me from the backside. You just didn't. Look at any video of me, look at any picture of me, and it's always the front of me. <laughs> Maybe the side of me, but never the back of me, because that's where my insecurities lie, right? That's where I feel like, oh God, I've 
10 years into doing all these speech buddy programs and I just can't, again, I thank God every day for my healthy body, so please don't misunderstand, but I'm like, why can't I get my rear end back where it used to be, up high, and maybe not quite so spread out, like, moms, don't tell her I said that. So you would never see the backside of me. So when I took those pictures, I was like, oh my gosh, and I have to post them. I didn't have to post them, but I wanted to post them because I really wanted that accountability. And I also needed to be vulnerable because I wanted people to realize and I wasn't perfect and I had goals and all that good stuff. So it's incre incredibly important you take pictures. Do you have to share them in the group? No. Do you have to put them in your profile in the group? No. But I encourage you absolutely 100% to take them, number one, because sometimes you look at a mirror and you don't see your progress, but you look at two pictures side by side and you're like, damn, stuff is happening. I mean, even on day 30, and I was telling Robin this earlier, even on day 30, I mean, here I am with a mirror, you know, looking at the backside. That's no way to check if something's happening back there, right? But even on day 30, even when I initially put my day 30 pictures next to day one, I still had to kind of look really hard, and I was like, man, I don't even want to post these. I don't know if I see any change. As soon as I sent them to my success partner, my best friend, she was like, Mary, <laughs> do you not see and I was like, okay, 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 I do, I do, you're right, I do. So you can imagine if I didn't have a picture and I was just looking with a mirror, I clearly wouldn't have seen any kind of progress and it would have been frustrating. You will see progress with pictures side by side. Measurements are probably even more important than the pictures because sometimes you gain weight and when you gain weight, you might be losing inches. And I tell people this all the time, they get frustrated with me. They're like, my weight, my weight, my weight. It's not falling, it's not dropping. And I'm like, but they're like, but my, but my pants are falling off. Okay, who cares if your weight's falling? If your goal is to be a smaller human and your pants are falling off, then something is happening to your body. So please rejoice and celebrate, right? But we all get all crazy hung up on the scale, myself included. And so you have to make sure if you're measuring your arm and you're measuring your waist and you're measuring your hips and your legs and all of that good stuff, measure your darn head if you want to. Um, if you see the inches, if your goal is to lose, okay, be a smaller human, and you see the inches coming down, dude, that's black and white. <laughs> There's no fight in that. You can't deny that progress. That's happening. So measurements, your pictures. If you do an 80-day obsession, your pictures are going to be day one pictures, day 30 pictures, day 60 pictures, and then again on day 80. Keep in mind that the program is 90 days long. There are 80 workouts because you have off every Sunday. Every Sunday is a rest day. That's the 80-90 where it all comes in, okay? There's also, um, well, the last week is peak week, but that's built into the 80 workouts. So weight, measurements, pictures. And now let, and she, Autumn is really, 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 really adamant that you weigh yourself on day one and you do not weigh yourself again until day 30. However, if you want to weigh yourself every day or once a week or whatever, it's fine as long as you're not going to get frustrated. If you're cool with that and you are not going to lose your top if the scale doesn't move or if it moves in the wrong direction, who cares? Weigh yourself every day. I will tell you this. It's just a habitual thing. I have a um, little app and my phone and my scale and all this different stuff. I just jump on it every day. And I'll tell you why I jump on it every day. And a lot of people will tell you not to do that. I can do it because I'm cool here. Okay. I'm healthy between the ears. So it's not going to screw me up. But if it's going to screw you up, do not do it. I jump on it every day because if I jumped on it once a week or once every 30 days, I could potentially be holding water because I had a high sodium dinner the night before. I could be cycling at that time, ladies. Um, there could be a lot of reasons why the scale's doing weird stuff, and it could really screw me up and mess with my head probably more than if I just jump on every day. Sometimes it goes up, down, up, down. I'm usually somewhere between a four and five pound variance. Uh, it just depends, right? Did I not go to the bathroom? Did I go to the bathroom? Um, that's a little TMI. So that's what's going on there with weights and measurements and pictures. Now here's the dealio with body fat. Not everybody is fortunate enough to have a body fat calibrator, the ones you hold in your hand, most of the gyms have those, or a scale that also measures your body fat. And so some people just take their BMI. If you, own, if you don't have a body fat measuring device or tool, um, you can record your BMI, but please understand something about BMI. BMI only takes into account height and weight. 
So I want you to wrap your head around this. Arnold Schwarzenegger in his heyday, Mr. Olympia, would have been considered morbidly obese if you looked at his BMI because he was probably pushing almost 300 pounds at six foot whatever, right? But his body was so jacked with lean muscle. BMI doesn't take into account lean muscle. It just takes into account height and weight. So it could, you, you're not really getting an, an accurate um, uh, measurement of what's going on with your body fat at all because it's not taken into account the lean muscle. The calibrators do. The handheld ones are not great, but they're a baseline. The ones you stand on on your scale are better. And then like the cat daddy of all cat daddy is when you go to have a DEXA scan or you go and get fully submerged in water and they're really not that expensive. I had the DEXA scan before day one and I have another DEXA scan scheduled for the 19th of May. I think I want to say I paid like 60 or 70 bucks. Again, it's not super cheap, but it's really cool to be able to get that like almost 100% accuracy of your lean mass, lean muscle mass in your body and your body fat. Um, so that's sort of the variance. But here's the thing to keep in mind. Regardless of what your tool is to measure your body fat, just use the same tool throughout the 80 days. You don't want to utilize a handheld body fat calibrator on day one and then buy a scale that has a body fat calibrator and then get on that on day 30 and then go have an extra scan. You're, not, you're, measure, you're, you're comparing apples to oranges. Okay, so if you use a handheld, or you can, you can change, just don't compare them to each other because it's gonna be different. When you use a handheld, it sends electrodes through your upper body. So really it's measuring lean muscle kind of in your upper body. Well, if your upper body is super lean, but your lower body is where you carry your fat, then it's not gonna necessarily grab that and take that into account. So I just wanna make sure I clarify BMI versus body fat. Um, the calibrators, the handheld ones are actually pretty cool just to have at your house. I got mine on Amazon and I don't think it was that much money. I want to say maybe 20, 30 bucks, something like that. But, um, but now I have a, a new scale that I got at Apple, which I absolutely love. It connects to all my Apple devices and it's like, I love it. I love it. And it's got my husband. We like load ourselves in so I can check up on him and see how he's doing. Um, Chris says, I've done this before and nowhere, and nowhere near her support. Oh, God bless you. Love you. You're awesome. I love you for saying that, Chris. Okay, so that's your, that's your sort of before stuff related to your body. <clears throat> and, uh, and so that's, that's all that good stuff. Now, as far as the prep workouts, if you're doing 80-day obsession, <clears throat> it's really, really important that you do at least the first and second one. I'd love for you to get all five of them in. Um, Lisa, I know, has, and she's actually rolling into round two of A Little Obsessed. The prep workouts are called A Little Obsessed for 80 day obsession. They're in BOD, they're in BOD. Um, if, for those of you who may or may not know this, there is an app for BOD. You can access your Beachbody on demand from the website, but you can also download the app. So if you're out and about and you have your phone or your tablet or your laptop or whatever, sometimes it's easier to pull it up on the app. And um, a little obsessed, of course, all the workout programs are there for you. So a little obsessed is five workouts and they're 30 minutes each and they're prepped for 80 day obsession. What's cool about them is that she goes into a lot of explanation about through these workouts about what to expect with 80 day obsession. So there's a lot of talk about the loops, the dreaded loops. So the resistance loops, just so you also know this program, while it's a total body workout program is very, very heavily focused on your abs and your booty. So there's the loops and the resistance loops around your leg. <laughs> Anytime you have them on, your glutes are activated. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you're just standing there. They're so intense, right? And so um, you will get frustrated initially, probably, if you're like 99.9% .9 of us, because they'll slide all over your legs. They're gonna roll up, they're gonna roll down, they're gonna roll all over the place. And what you need to do during the prep, a little obsessed workouts, is you need to find that place on your leg, and you will, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. You won't understand it now if you haven't done any of these, but Lisa probably knows what I'm talking about. You just find the sweet spot. There's a space, there's a spot on your legs where you realize they won't move uh, or not as much, right? The other thing is if you're a guy, you need to get some compression shorts or compression pants because you put those bad boys on your leg with hair, <laughs> especially if they roll, you're going to rip the hair out of your legs. 
So highly, oh, kitty cat. Highly recommend you get some sort of compression. I know you're gonna feel really weird and you're gonna think about oh, your ballet dancer and nobody sees you. That's the beautiful thing about doing these workouts at home. Nobody's gonna know, you're just doing your own thing. So put your little compression pants on and your loops on the days you have loops so you don't rip your hair out of your legs. But she explains to you a lot about the loops, how they work, why they work. Um, <clears throat> you will eventually double up as you get into phase, at end of phase one, two, and three, she makes recommendations if you feel ready, then you get all the way to blue, you can double up. And so you start doubling up and it's even more resistance. But she talks a lot about that the, you always need to check your loops to make sure there's no tears. You also need to understand that as you progress using these loops over and over and over again, they stretch. So I have a new set of loops on, it's, they're on their way to me because I use the same set for all 80 days of my round one. And I can tell that they're stretched out. So when they stretch out, what do they do? They're less resistance, right? A little bit easier, but you don't want that. You know, you want to make sure that you are um, pushing as hard as you can and getting as much resistance. Eric said, I took Shakeology for a few years, loves the stuff, but it's not, not enormous enough. What's enormous enough? <laughs> I don't know, who, your Shakeology is not enormous? Anyway. Uh, Lisa says, since I'm at the gym, I bought wireless earphones, use the app, can do the workouts in the gym. I don't have the heavier weights. A lot of people do that. A lot of the guys started to do that um, with Body Beast because Body Beast is such a bulk building program. And most people just, I mean, you need an arsenal like of weights big time. It used to be weird if you saw somebody at the gym with like their phone propped up and a workout like going. Totally not weird anymore because there are so many online workout programs now that it's not faux pas. It really truly isn't. So if you do feel like you want to do these workouts in the gym, go for it. And don't feel weird. Just go over to the weight section, prop your phone up. And the cool thing with, with Autumn is that you don't need to see her. Her cueing is so good. If you just listen to her, you don't even leave, look at her. A lot of times I face my mirror on the side and I don't even look at her. So, you know, you can glance over to make sure you're doing it right, but her, she's even queuing form. So you're, you're usually right on, on the money. So that's cool. Um, okay. So the prep workouts, again, really, really important. Do as many of them as you can, but cut at a minimum. Can you do like at least two, the first two would be helpful. Um, those workouts are 30 minutes. The 80 day obsession workouts range from about 45 40 minutes maybe to 60 minutes and I remember when it first came out and the first test group was going through it and all of us that weren't in the first test group but we were just hearing about it we were like oh my god third 60 minutes because all of the beach body programs for the last like two or three years have all been like 30 minutes or less we even had you know a 22 minute workout 22 minute hardcore with Tony Horton it was only 22 minutes so and then we had um, Focus T25. So all the workouts were like just at 30 minutes or, or even a little bit less. So when we heard some of these workouts were going to be an hour long, everyone like cried and they moaned and they groaned, myself included, sort of silently. But I would tell you this, honest to God, I raised my hand I'm, I, to, to God. I'm, I'm not just saying this because I'm the coach. They go by so fast that you, you, yes, if you're doing them before work, you better get up a little early, make sure you have enough time. Um, but they go by so fast. It's not like during the workout, you're going, Oh my gosh, I still have another 30 minutes or whatever. You'll just, and she flies quick, 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 quick. Um, and she does it on purpose because the producers basically looked at her and said, none of these workouts can be more than 60 minutes. So she'll do, um, she does three by tens and two by 15s. And what that means is three by tens are three rounds of the workouts of the exercises at 10 reps each. So that's where you're going to be bringing in your heavier weights because you only have 10 reps to do. And then the other workouts are two by 15. So it's two rounds, 15 reps each exercise. So you bring down your weights a little bit and then she has you do different things with those. Um, and when those, those one, some of the workouts that are three by 10s take a little longer and you can tell she's flying through it. So your transitions have to be quick. Don't get frustrated with her. Pause if you need to. Um, you'll learn how to take those loops on and off really, really fast because you don't want to, you just want to keep going and you want it to be over. <laughs> um, sliders. If you don't have your sliders yet, paper plates are an amazing, an amazing substitution. They actually sometimes work even better. If, again, again, on a carpeted surface, they're going to be, you probably could use them on tile too. They're just going to be a little bit of a challenge for you. 
but if you're still waiting on your loops and sliders to come, you can use some paper plates. If you don't have any of your equipment yet, just do the workout. Just do the move with or without your equipment. Just do the best you can, but getting your workouts in your calendar and then with, with alarms and bells and whistles and blocking off that time and just doing something so that you're starting to create that habit of that time slot is your slot, right? That's your, that's your workout time slot. And one of the things that I tell people all the time, and this is, my husband says this all the time, and so how you have to give him the credit, but hashtag, not that he even knows what a damn hashtag is, but hashtag truth over harmony. Truth over harmony means I'm gonna feed you some truth and we're still gonna be friends. <laughs> truth over harmony is that we all make time for the things that matter, which is very cliche, but it's very true. I, I always tell people, look, sit down and write out your priorities. What are your priorities in life? And make sure you're 24 hours each day that you are uh, upholding your priorities. So <clears throat> if you have a priority to honor your temple, and to be healthy and to feel good and have energy and stop feeling sluggish and all of these things, then you might cut out TV and replace it with a workout um, or taking time to figure out your healthy eating. Um, you know, we make sacrifices for the things that matter to us. So it, it, you may have to make some sacrifices. I don't know what your day looks like, but we all have the same 24 hours. And I know a lot of people look at me now and they're like, it's easy for you, you're home all day. Yep, but I wasn't. I was a corporate executive working 10, 12 hour days, driving to Tampa and back, which was an hour and a half in the car every day. I had a child to raise, you know, and I had a, I had a family and things going on. And I got up early and I did all of this while I was still in that world. So I do know what it's like to be a very busy person. Um, and usually it's when you're feeling frustrated with not having enough time, 99.9% .9 of the time it's just Satan trying to um, just steal in your time. He, he comes to, you know, seek and destroy. We know that. So don't let him. So plan your workouts out. Got loops, sliders, weights. I was talking, having a good conversation with Robin and Eric today about weights. <clears throat> what do you need? Well, it'd be awesome if you could have a big old variety, but weights are expensive and you might not already have that in your house. Um, some people have asked me about Bowflex. I own Bowflex. Um, I don't usually recommend it. I don't like it. I, it's, it seems amazing, like, oh my gosh, you have this little bit of space taken up and it has all this different variety of, of weights you can dial up. The problem and the challenge is that two things. One, they're really big and bulky. So like with a move like an upright row, your upright row is so like way out here because the thing, like even if you only have five pounds on it, it still has all the mechanisms to hold all the weights. So it's like, wow, you're like way into a crazy form. So it's not my favorite for that reason. And I also can't transition fast enough, especially with autumn and 80 day obsession, because you got to go back over dial all four sections up to the right weight, get back to wherever your spot was working out. So they're not my favorite, but they're totally fine and they're doable. And if you own them, awesome and good for you. If you don't, you basically need light, medium and heavy. <clears throat> light, medium, and heavy <clears throat> sets, whatever that looks like for you. Ladies, don't be afraid to lift heavy. We don't have enough testosterone to bulk up, so don't freak out about that. Um, just get yourself what you would consider light, medium, and heavy. I don't want to see any ladies with two pounders. That's just crazy. You're stronger than that. And I'm not trying to push you to pain, but I think you can do better than that. So I would say maybe 5, 8, 10, you know, 8, 10, 12. If you're a guy, I would say, you know, 12, 15, 20, you will want heavier, so, but you can build slowly. And we get into the balk phase in phase two, which is month two. <clears throat> and so you can take the first month to utilize maybe whatever you got, a little bit lighter, and then go and get yourself a little bit heavier maybe as you roll into month two. <clears throat> By month three, you'll totally want to have some heavier stuff. You're just gonna be stronger, you're gonna have progressed a lot. So, you know, you can, you can look for yard sales, a lot of people, <laughs> on the wagon, off the wagon, right? They're selling their stuff. So you can look for that or Craigslist or eBay or go to um, Play It Against Sports. I always find Play It Against Sports is expensive. I don't know, they're supposed to be, you know, selling new stuff, but it's expensive to me. I've gotten a couple of my weights and stuff. I got a lot of them at Sports Authority, but I got a couple at Target. Well, I think my fives and my eights I got at Target. Um, so you find yourself a good deal. <clears throat> People are always looking to unload them. Um, food, nutrition. Let's go there because this is really important. And then I want to uh, leave time for Q&A. If you're going to do the 80 day obsession program and you're just going to do it for the workouts, yeah, you're, they're great workouts, but man, the program, you, it's so 
about in, in any program, I told you 80% of it is going to be about your nutrition. And so I really need you to go in to BOD, click on 80 day obsession workout program, and then watch. There's two videos that are that'll help you with planning she has two little videos in the video section you know when you go into bod and you click on a workout program by the way i don't know if you realize this yet the way the format is you click on the workout program it will default to the videos the videos can be workout videos they could be videos that are her talking and helping you with preparing but it defaults to the video page but there's a button right next to the videos that'll say program materials you click on the program materials, that's where you're gonna get documents, PDFs and things like that. When you go into 80 Day Obsession, watch those two little videos about preparing with the nutrition plan, then go into the documents in the program materials and read through the nutrition plan. Like read, read it twice, read it three times, wrap your head around what she's trying to tell you, and then all the PDFs below that are gonna be all the different plans. Plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, plan E, plan F. Then they go into the Spanish written plan A, plan B, plan So you're gonna see a lot of documents, but you have to remember we've got Spanish speaking folks too, so they've got some stuff in uh, Spanish there. And, and actually they even have the French now as well because there's French Canadians and stuff like that. So there's gonna be a lot of documents, but the English ones are at the top. And so you're gonna read the actual documents to understand the program, and then you're gonna go right into your document for your plan, for your meal plan. So what does that mean, Mary? Well, the first thing you do with the nutrition plan is a calculation. You do a calculation to determine which meal plan you fall into. And the calculation starts out with what's your weight, and then it has you multiply it by, I think, 11. I have this memorized properly. And then you take that number, and then it asks you a question. Are you looking to lose weight or maintain? So maintenance or weight loss, right? Based on your answer, it's gonna have you do another, multi, do another math equation. I think it has you deduct um, minus out 750, if I have that memorized properly, um, if you're in a weight loss bracket, if you wanna lose weight. So you're gonna do the whole calculation and it's gonna come up with a number at the bottom. It's real easy math, I just don't remember, <laughs> remember it all off the back, out of the back of my hand. Um, and come up with a number. Then you go to the next page, and the next page is gonna say, hey, if that number at the bottom, after you've done all your math, is this number, between this number and this number, you're in plan A. If it's between this number and this number, you're in plan B. If it's between this number and this number, you're in plan C. Does that make sense? Then it'll tell you if you're in, which whatever plan you're in, it's then gonna tell you how many times you can fill each of your colored containers each day. So it's gonna say, like for me, I'm in plan A, it's gonna say, you know, four reds, two yellows, two purples, one blue, one orange, three teaspoons, two teaspoons, whatever the hell it is, right? And so it's going, going to tell me that. <clears throat> this is where it goes from the portion fixed meal plan to 80 day obsession. That whole beginning piece, is exactly what I've been living for several years now um, because that's the portion fix plan, meal plan. What you do with those containers, it tells you you can fill them so many times a day. With the normal meal plan, it's like, hey, here's how many times you can fill each container every day. You can eat them anytime you wanna eat them. <laughs> you can sit down and have all your containers at the same exact time in one meal. It would hurt your belly, I'm sure. But they don't matter, eat them anytime you wanna eat them. And here's a list of all the things you can put in your red container, and here's a list of all the things you can put in your blue container, here's a list of all the things you can put in your orange container, and so on. That's where the regular portion fixed meal plan stops. What do we do with 80 Day Obsession? Autumn says, hey, scientifically, if I have you do what she calls timed nutrition, I can take you to the next level. And I wanna test that with this 80 day obsession program. So that's what she did with the first test group and that's what she did with us in the second test group. And that's what she found out is producing amazing results and that's what became the program. So basically now what you do is the next page in the document, in the guide says, hey, it's cool that you can have four reds. Here's when I want you to eat them. And so everything revolves around the workout block. 
If you were, and she tells you and she gives you examples. If you're gonna work out in the morning, here's an example of a morning workout day. If you're gonna work out in the middle of the afternoon, here's an example of a midday workout food day. If you're gonna work out at night, here's an example of a workout um, food day for nighttime workouts. But the bottom line is the, the meals that surround the workout or workout block, she calls them, are what's really, really critical. All of the meals and the how she has them timed out are critical. But those are really critical because she wants to fuel you for the workout and she wants to refuel you after the workout. So for me in plan A, and I don't even have to write this out anymore and I don't even have to like look at a picture. Again, after 80 days, it, it's like the back of my hand. And that's cool. Right now it all seems very confusing and you're like, oh my God. But it will, I swear to you, two, three weeks in, you're going to be like, Shh. I got this. It's like so, it becomes so much easier than we made it so difficult, right? And I love to be able to say that because I made it challenging too. I was scared out of my mind. I'm like, I'm gonna mess up week one. I was so worried I was gonna mess up that when I planned my week out, I had seven days of exactly the same meals because I was like, I don't wanna mess this up. Uh, and I did, I ate the same thing for seven days straight, which I didn't care, that was fine. I wanted to follow the rules. So my workout before my, I mean my meal before my workout, is a red, a green, a yellow, and a teaspoon. My meal after my workout is a red, a green, a yellow, and a teaspoon, okay? And I think the other meal plans are that way too. Whatever you eat pre, she wants you to eat post. Usually the yellow, the carbohydrates, the starchy carbs, surround the workout. A, to fuel you for the workout, and then B, after the workout, to refuel you after the workout. Usually she's got the carbs at the beginning of the day. Those are your yellows, the carbs are your yellows. <clears throat> and so, if your workout is later in the day, then those will be pushed down and moved to later in the day. It just depends on where that workout is, right? Well, the big question a lot of people ask, ask a lot of questions, and she went live in the test group and answered a lot of them, and I want to make sure you get this information. One of the questions was, oh my gosh, that's a lot of food, and I have to work out at like 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning because I have to be at work so early. I don't know if I can eat a meal that, that, that's that big that early in the morning and she said if you are going to be doing an extremely early morning workout you don't have to eat that big meal before your workout you can take the smaller meal down here at the bottom I think it's like meal two or three or something like that and she said you can move that up and that is written in the document in BOD so you, you don't need it's there read read every word and you'll see that you can move that up I think that meal is like the red and the purple and a teaspoon or something like that, which a lot of people use the red, the purple, and the teaspoon meal for their Shakeology because most people in their Shakeology is a red, the purple is a fruit, and a teaspoon. Um, so what a lot of people do is they use a teaspoon for their almond milk because one cup of almond milk is a teaspoon, counts as a teaspoon. Most people put a fruit, not, my, not me, but a lot of people put a fruit in their Shakeology, so you can take that fruit and put it right in your shake and then the red is your Shakeology. I do my Shakeology a little different, I'll tell you about that in a second, but a lot of people will take that meal and make that the pre-workout and then move the bigger meal down. She said you could do that if you were doing an extremely early morning workout, but otherwise she would prefer, if you're not doing an extremely early wor morning workout, that you leave it as it's written and you have that, what seems like a really big meal before that workout. I can tell you that prior to 80 day obsession, I was doing intermittent fasting. If you don't know what intermittent fasting is, it just means you eat all of your meals in an eight hour time slot, and usually you don't eat that first meal until later in the morning, 11, 12, one o'clock, something like that. And then you eat in an eight hour window and your body fasts the other 16 hours. So going into 80 day obsession, I was like, whole oh, doggy. Not only do I have to eat in the morning, <laughs> which I wasn't used to, but I have to eat this humongous meal early and before a workout, am I going to, is my stomach going to kill me with all this food in it? I just could not wrap my head around this. Totally fine. I'm worried about nothing. As a matter of fact, I can't even imagine not having that meal now because I realized how much it helped me to have a better workout. So trust the program, trust the trainer, trust the process and do what it says, right? So that's really how she took portion fixed meal plan called it timed nutrition and took it to the next level with having you eat the containers at a very specific time of the day. The other question a lot of people said was, okay, we get the workout block. We get what we need to eat before the workout. We get what we need to eat after. And we understand sci scientifically why, but the other little meals for the rest of the day, 
Do we have to eat them every two to three hours? And do we have to eat those combinations together? Answer, yes. You have to eat those combinations together. There's a reason those combinations are together. And there's also a reason why she has them spaced out every two to three hours. Number one, between each meal, your body needs time to digest it. Um, number one. Number two, the, there's, a, there's science behind the combinations. Um, so she said, no, you need to, if you want to follow it exactly, you need to eat them just the way it's laid out. Okay. So there's one meal for me in plan A that's like a real weird, like blue and a green. <laughs> I'm like, blue is a healthy fat, green is a vegetable, right? So I'm like, okay, blue and a green. So honestly, sometimes the combination made sense and sometimes it was like, made no sense, but I didn't care. I just wanted to follow the program. So I remember the first time I had like carrot chips and cashews like as my blue and green, because cashews are blue and the carrot chips were, car you know, carrots. So they, not chips like a chip, like carrots that, you know, carrot chips like you would dip in a ranch dressing, <laughs> not for any day obsession, but they were carrots, they were carrots. Um, and I was like, carrots and cashews. Okay, that's kind of strange. Totally delicious. I, I eat it all the time now, even on Saturday nights or whatever. I'm like, I love my, my husband's like carrots and cashews. I'm like, look, I'm just going with it. I'm just going with it. But spinach and feta is an awesome combo for that. Tastes like spanakopita. If you've ever had spinach pie, you can heat it and melt it. So the feta cheese melts with the spinach. It's really, really good. So you'll find little combos. And guess what? Google is your friend. There are so many people who've done 80 Day Obsession now that if you Google, literally put in the Google search, green, blue, 80 Day Obsession, and you will get like a shit ton of... <laughs> response to people who have ideas for how to put blues and greens together because it seemed like that was the biggest question everybody had was what the heck do I put blues and greens um so that's that with the uh the the basic premise and the understanding behind the meal plan I posted in the faithfully fit group uh in in the challenge tracker app the spreadsheet that someone shared in the test group and I used initially the spreadsheet is an excel spreadsheet it's through google docs and it is laid out for plan A. So if you use the spreadsheet and you're not in plan A, you just need to add in your rows for the other containers that you're allowed to have, God bless you. <laughs> so add in your rows and then you can plan out your week like that. I also will tell you that I use the spreadsheet, like I said, probably for the first three weeks. Um, every Sunday night I was like, oh my God, the spreadsheet. And I put all my stuff in there and I started with, I started out with what did I have on hand? That's how I filled the spreadsheet out. So I'd look at it on Sunday and say, okay, what's in the, what's in the kitchen? And then I would start filling in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday based on what I, what did I have? What did I already have? What did I already have made? What, what, what did I already have in the fridge? You know, so I didn't have to go to the store. And so I would use those foods to create like the first whatever till I knew the food was going to run out. And then I would plan the rest of the week and then make a grocery list based on what was I going to be out of and what did I need to go to the store and get. That's how I did it. Um, and I did it for about three weeks. And after three weeks, I didn't need to do it anymore because I just got it. Like I knew it. But one of the things I did was once I, once I did it, I took a, uh, a picture of it. And I kept it in my photos in my phone. So like if I was in the kitchen, I didn't have to run all the way back in here to look at my piece of paper and my spreadsheet. Like it was always with me. Or if I was on the road and I got stuck out in, in the world <laughs> and, I, and I wasn't home, I, I knew when it was time to eat. And so I would just go to the store or a restaurant or whatever and get whatever I needed to make sure I didn't miss the meals because you want to make sure you get all that food in you. It's a lot of food. It's a lot of food. And one of the big questions everybody asks is, do I have to eat all the food? You should strive as hard as you can to eat all of the food, um, especially when you're in a higher bracket, a higher meal plan. It's you're going to seem like a lot of food, but uh, so you won't be hungry, <laughs> but you, you want to eat as much of the food. Um, so the Excel spreadsheet helped me to plan ahead. And then because I was doing that planning ahead, it was in my brain. It was in my brain. Second thing I want to tell you that makes it easy for you is the whole concept of now and later. If you follow me on social media for any length of time, you know what I'm talking about, but I'm going to explain it. One of the most important things when you're trying to make good, healthy food choices is, is that you have healthy grab and go. Because when you're hungry, <laughs> you're not going to go into the produce drawer and pull out all of your beautiful produce and chop it all up and rinse it real nice and then cook it 
and then you're just not going to do it because you're hungry right then and there. And so what do you do? You go into the pantry and you get a bag of chips because that's very easy to grab and start to eat right away. And that's where we get derailed. So it's incredibly important that you have healthy grab and go ready, 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 ready. Okay. Ready for you. And so no worries, Chris, thanks for hopping on. I'm recording so you can listen to the rest later. Um, so I do what I call now and later because meal prep Sundays are incredibly awesome. People have massive success with meal prep Sundays. If that's what you want to do, I praise you go for it. And I love you for it. I love you for it. I truly do. I hated it. And I'd rather take a toothpick and jam it in my eyeball because I was like, I was doing it and I was miserable and my feet hurt and my back, I have a lot of problems with my lower back, scoliosis and arthritis, so standing on the tile for two hours in the kitchen. It was just, the whole thing was pissing me off. So I was like, how can I still have healthy grab and go and not have this whole thing on Sunday? And I was like, why am I overcomplicating this? Every time I make a meal, I always make extra servings. It's, I call it now and later. I'm gonna make enough for what we need now, for however many people are, I want you to look at that. I'm gonna tell you about that in a second. I showed Robin that earlier. My husband's like, if your damn phone goes off one more time to tell you to eat, I'm gonna throw it away. You have to have something that tells you to eat because you gotta eat a lot, okay? Um, so we're gonna set those alarms and I'll tell you about that in a second. So the bottom line is, if it's just my husband and I, why on earth would I just make two salmon fillets, two baked pot or sweet potatoes, and two servings of green beans, and two salads. No, <laughs> I usually make four to six at every meal of whatever I'm making. If I'm making breakfast and it's pan um, cottage cheese pancakes, or if I'm making spinach to eat with my breakfast for my spinach and my eggs and my sweet potato I have every morning, or if I'm making salmon or chicken or filet mignon or whatever it is I'm cooking, I just make extra at least two extra servings, at least at the very least. So what does that do? And don't put it all on the table because the man will eat it, just so you know. And then you'll have no leftovers. <laughs> so you immediately portion out what you guys are getting ready to eat for your family of two, four, six, or eight, or how many people you got. Lisa's got a gaggle over there. And, uh, and then you take the other servings and you immediately put them into a container. You put the lid on them, you put them in the refrigerator because that's your healthy grab and go. That's gonna be lunch tomorrow, that's gonna to be breakfast tomorrow, that's gonna to be dinner tomorrow, that's gonna to be that weird blue and green meal you need, and that's gonna be the later stuff, okay? And, and you don't have to cook something every single day. You see how it just makes it easier? So again, Lisa and I were talking about this the other day. If you're cool with repetition, Robin and I were saying it today, if you're cool with repetition, which I used to not be, I'm like, oh, I just ate that yesterday. Who cares now? I'm like, it's good. I'll eat it again. Um, if you're cool with repetition, this is going to be really easy for you because you're just going to make boom, 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 bunch of servings of whatever it is you're getting ready to cook at that moment. You're going to bag it all up, box it up, container it up, whatever you do, stick it in the refrigerator, and boom, you're ready to go. This morning, I'll give you an example. My, my go-to breakfast, I don't know why I'm so in love with this, but I am, and it works perfect, is half of a sweet potato, and I don't know if you've ever had the white organic sweet potatoes, but I have never been so in love with a sweet potato in my entire life. Our grocery store has these, they're colossal too. They're, I swear I'm not joking, they're like that big. They literally make four servings um, of the yellow container because they're so big, but they're organic sweet potatoes, but they're white. They actually almost look like a potato when you open them up. They are so sweet, you don't need a single thing on them. You don't need Himalayan sea salt, you don't need any butter, you don't need coconut oil, nothing. They're delicious. So my go-to breakfast is a sweet potato, sauteed spinach that I saute in coconut oil because they need a healthy fat, two eggs. And so this morning I was making my spinach and I was like, why would I just make one green container of spinach? I had this huge thing that I bought at BJ's, which is a huge, longest thing. It makes like four servings. And I just literally, like in two batches, put the coconut oil, sauteed up that spinach, put my four containers on the counter, and measured out with my green container and I have four servings. So I ate one this morning and I've got tomorrow, which is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I've got my breakfast spinach for the next, next three days all the way through the weekend. And I did the same thing with the sweet potato. I made two of them. There are four servings each sweet potato. <laughs> so I've got like eight cut up, you know, ready to go in a container and you just put it in the fridge. The other thing I do with salad 
if you don't put anything wet in the salad, if you don't put your tomatoes and, and mushrooms don't do well either, but if, if you take your salad bowl and you just do salad greens, and I like to chop up, I got this really cool like chopper thing, chop up carrots, red onion, peppers, if you like sweet peppers, whatever you like in your salad, cut up a bunch of stuff and put it all in the salad bowl with the greens. The, the trick, and I just literally, when I tell you, my husband will tell you, I put the salad spoons and everything in the bowl and I put it right back in the refrigerator. You have to take a paper towel and lay the paper towel on top of the salad and then you seal it with saran wrap and you put it in the fridge and the paper towel will absorb the moisture so your salad greens will stay crisp. I make one of those that probably lasts my husband and I four or five days, something like that. So I don't have to make a salad every night. I just pulled, literally, because I have the spoons I leave in them, I just pull the bowl out, take the saran wrap and the paper towel and put it right there on the table. I'm like, there's the salad. And I chop up a tomato and put it in our salad bowl so we have tomato or whatever we want that's wet. Um, it's perfect. When you start to learn little hacks like that, that's what makes this whole thing. Robin has things that she needs to do where she's on the go. She's got kids and sporting activities, little tiny snack baggies. Um, like the other day I bought sunflower seeds. No roasted, no salted. They're good raw, you'll get used to it. Bought the sunflower seeds in bulk, got my little snack baggies out, got my little orange container, because seeds are orange container, and I just went, filled up the orange, dumped it in a baggie. Filled up an orange, dumped it in a baggie. I think I've made 20 baggies of the seeds. Sealed them all up, put them back in the little container, and I put them in the pantry thing. And now I just grab the baggie, like if I want to put it on a salad or I want to take it with me for that weird orange meal that I have at the end of the day. So when you do stuff like that, it makes everything 10 times easier. Uh, and you're not like all stressed out about, oh my gosh, I've got to prep another meal. And you feel like you're constantly meal prepping. Uh, I talked about you can't move meals around. I talked about the sweet potatoes. Oh, the glycemic index. Okay, so all the foods that are listed in the, all the lists, the red, the green, the blue, all of them, um, they're actually listed in a specific order. You may not know this, but they're listed from low on the glycemic index to high. So the opposite. So all of the foods at the top of the list are low on the glycemic index and they are the best choices. <laughs> As the list goes down, they get higher and higher and higher on the glycemic index. Can you eat anything on the list? Yes, you can. That's why it's on the list. <laughs> However, I would recommend that you don't always choose brown rice for your yellow container because it's higher on the glycemic index and it's a little bit more of a starchy carb. A sweet potato is like the first thing listed. That's why I went nutso with sweet potatoes because I was like, okay, cool. I like them and they're at the top. I'm good with that. Now I'm not even going to think about it. Um, but doesn't mean you have to eat a sweet potato every day. I'm just saying. The other thing is fruit. Are bananas on the list? Yes. Are there some other high sugar fruits on the list? Yes. You just don't want to pick them every single time. Bananas, pineapples, mangoes, they're all wonderful, but they have a lot of sugar, a lot of natural sugars in them. And so what it does is it spikes up um, your glycogen levels and it's going to work against you. So your berries are your best choices, your raspberries, your blueberries, your strawberries, um, blackberries are delicious, right? So try to choose from the list top to bottom, if that makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna shut up, like, oh my, my throat. So what questions can I answer for you? Um, I wanted to see what was in the, I think I went, got through everything in the chat box. Big old Q&A is happening right now. What questions can I answer for you? Do you feel like you're ready or where do you feel? Lisa and I were talking a little bit today and she's feeling nervous about the nutrition thing. Are you feeling a little bit more prepared and organized or where is your head, Lise? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. No, I feel good. This sounds really doable. So it's just a matter of, like you said, getting used to doing all of the different um, all the different containers and just getting, I know once we get into it, it'll be a little bit easier. And I'm looking at this list now as you're talking and it's nice to know about the, um, the order of everything yeah, to um, make the best choices possible. So no, this sounds really good. 
the good thing with Lisa is that um, she's been eating healthy for quite a while. So when you're already eating pretty clean, really for you, it's going to be just a matter of the time nutrition and sort of planning that piece of it out, which you'll get used to. Um, but it's not like you've literally been eating like a ton of junk food and you have to like figure out how am I going to miss those cravings. So you got that working for you. That's going to be great. The other thing I can say too, based on you knowing you for so many years is I've never seen such a change. You've always been really healthy, but over this last, you know, 80 days that you've really been focusing on this, it really made a huge difference in your, your body. And then I know too, when you do those first five workouts for a little extreme, she even tells you that they've already been through the whole program before they did those first five days. And you can see their bodies because I watched, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I, I just looked at the first day when they all started day one, huge differences in their bodies and they're all athletes. They're all very, very healthy to begin with. So I'm excited to see what types of changes this will make. Well, thank you for that. Um, I honestly didn't, I was very, very healthy going into day one. And um, I was like, I don't really know how much farther I could take. Even my, my accountability partner and best friend said, what are your goals with this? I said, well, first of all, I just want to do the program. Like I want to understand it in order to coach people through it. That's, that, that was the big piece of me, of course, wanting to be a part of the, the second test group. But um, I was like, I don't know. I mean, let me see what happens. I can't begin to tell you. I mean, I did lose six pounds. It really wasn't a goal, but I, but I did lose weight. It just happens, right? Because you're, it's just you're eating that clean. You're eating 100% clean. Um, number one, but I can't explain to you like how I feel. Um, my husband's like, your energy levels through the roof. Now, if you know me, I, I usually have a lot of energy anyway. But like, I have a lot of energy, and I take in no caffeine. I don't know if you know that or not. There's nothing wrong with coffee, but I just don't drink it. Never have, um, and I've never. I don't drink sodas, and so I'm just like a little bunny rabbit. I'm just have so much energy, but I, do, I really do. I have digestive issues. I have gastroparesis. And so, um, I've just found that my belly felt so good during those 80 days. I, I know I need to be careful with high fiber uh, vegetables. I, I can't do high amounts of broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, all the things I love, but they're very high in fiber. So you just sort of start to learn. And, and I will tell you this as a general rule of thumb, you know, there's the list of foods that are good for you. And then there's a list of foods that aren't so good for you. But even the list of foods that are good for you, they might not be good for you. So you really have to make sure you test your body. When you're starting, when you have a day where you're like, God, I'm going to feel really bloated before I, you go to bed, think about what you ate that day and test your body by pulling it out. The other thing my body has a challenge with is dairy. Um, most of us do. We're, believe it or not, the more research you do, we're, our bodies aren't intended to eat cows milk and dairy. I mean, it's just, it has a hard time. It struggles with digesting that. Um, doesn't mean you can't ever have it. Doesn't mean it's bad for you. It just means maybe pull back a little bit and see if your body does better. The other thing that our bodies struggle with digesting is meats, a lot of red meat. So, you know, I still eat red meat. I love filet. I love, you know, there's other red meats that I like. Um, I love bison, but I just don't eat it every single day because the days I do have it, you know, I don't feel awful, but I definitely feel a little bit more heavy and bloated before I go to bed. So you just have to feel out, okay, here's the healthy list. Which ones are healthiest for me? You know, I do want to tap in real quick for, before I take another question and talk about water, um, because it's so important. The rule of thumb with water is that you should drink half of your body weight in ounces per day. That's half of your body weight in ounces per day. So if you're 140 pounds, you should be taking in 70 ounces of water per day. Many people are challenged with how on God's green earth do I get in that much water. Now, for those of us who are already doing well with that habit, no big deal. Like, we're used to it. Robin said she's good with her water. At least I know you drink your water. Um, uh, this is a 40-ounce water bottle, and I'm not suggesting you have to get one this big. Um, I drink two of these a day. Do I need all 80 ounces according to that formula? No, but I just do. I drink two of these a day. But here's what I do because I, I'm OCD and I need the – visual and the mental stuff. I have two of these. I fill them both up before I go to bed every night. If I relied on the fact that I was going to drink this and then refill it, I'd forget and question my brain. Am I on number two or number one? Okay, so I don't leave anything to question, fill two bottles up and I empty them before I go to bed at night. 
Well, here's the little trick. Two tricks. One, every time you put it to your mouth, you take at least eight to 10 gulps. Just eight to 10, just make it happen. For me personally, I can't do cold water, it hurts my teeth. So I have to have lukewarm water and it's actually a little bit better for your body if you do any research on that. You shouldn't drink super, super, super cold water. But anyway, 10 gulps, eight to 10 gulps as much as you can that will help you get it down and get it in for the day. The second little tip I have for you is set milestones. So I remember when I used to, it's a little bit easier for me now because I'm kind of like right here in this office almost all day. But when I was working and I had to get in the car and drive to Tampa, my goal was always the first 20 ounces before I left the house, you know, to go to work. So I would drink half, you know, 20 ounces before I left. The other 20 ounces I wanted done. So the first bottle was done before lunch break at noon. And then I would drink the next 20 ounces between with lunch and before I got in the car to go home. And then the last 20 ounces while I drove home and up to an hour before I went to bed. So I had those little milestones in my head. And if I felt myself falling short, I just started chugging, started chugging. The other thing with the water is, A, it's gonna make you feel full. It's gonna help you if you're worried about feeling hungry or you start to feel hungry. Um, two is when we get that water in our body, it is flushing out more things than you could possibly imagine. Toxins, um, it's just flush, it's getting everything moving through your body the way it's supposed to. Our bodies are supposed to have that much water. If you live in Florida or anywhere where it's hot and we're rolling into summer, you need to stay hydrated. Um, it will help you so much in reaching your goals and being a healthy human, a healthy body. And a lot of people discount the value of it because all they can think about are calories. Like they think everything is based on the calories you take in. And I'm just telling you that please understand the goldenness of your water <laughs> um, and get it in your body. That's really, really important. Oh, the, the supplements, um, the performance line. Let me talk a little bit about the supplements. So I had tried the performance line when it first came out because I always want to make sure that I understand the products that our company has. Loved all of them. The only one I really didn't do is creatine, and that's just because some women do creatine, but it's not really something you need or it's not really recommended. So I didn't really do creatine, but I had tried the Energize, and I had tried the Recover, and I had tried the, tried the Recharge, and I had tried the Hydrate. And I thought they were all great. And I understood we had the doctor who was part of the formulation come to our summit. And he literally explained all the science behind it. And I was like, wow, there, there's a lot that went into this. Please understand that everything Beachbody puts out is all natural. We don't put anything artificial in anything. Not Shakeology, not the performance line, nothing. Everything is all food, roots, plants, real stuff, okay? So our performance line is actually a sponsor for the Ironman. And it also is NSF, I think certified, which is the national sports something or another, <laughs> which means that Olympic athletes can use our performance line um, and prof professional athletes. And it's, it's allowed, like it won't mess up their, you know, drug testing or their uh, rules that they have. So when AD Day Obsession rolled out and Autumn was like, look, I want you to do the exact I wish you do this system 100% just like the test group. I'm like, you got it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I ordered a whole shit ton of the I was like, okay, I'll do it all. Now, here's the thing. Remember, I was scared to death to eat before a workout. You can only imagine how scared I was to drink, hydrate during my workout. I ran a marathon. Five hours I ran with no water because I don't drink water when I work out. I don't drink water when I run. I'm always scared it's going to hurt my belly. I didn't care that I was running for five hours in a marathon. I would have been figure it out. Um, so the fact that I was going to drink a drink during a workout, I was like, oh dear, now I can tell you I will not do a workout without the supplement line. That's how amazed and impressed I was with what it actually was doing and how much it helped me. So energize before your workout. You want to drink it about 15 minutes prior. Some people, and because I take it no caffeine, I was scared. I was like, oh, is my heart going to race? Like, am I going to feel that like having a heart attack feeling? No. Because the, the stimulants are from red beets and green tea. They're not from artificial crap, okay? So you have no racing of the heart. However, <laughs> the stimulants from the red beets and the green tea, you may feel a tingling on your face, um, on your cheek. Some people get that. The first time you feel it, you're like, what the hell is that? Like, it feels a little bit weird. Not everybody feels it, but some people do. Now I actually like it because I'm like, oh, it's kicking in. It's time to do the pre-workout dance party.
party. So we can go on, right? I mean, I could just feel it. I have all this crazy energy. So you will um, definitely experience Energize. It's an awesome, an awesome thing, I think. Um, the cool thing that the doctor told us about Energize, because this is why I never drank it, because he was like, in my brain, I was like, I don't need energy for the workout. I got plenty of energy. And he's like, you know, yes, Energize gives you energy for your workout, but it does so much more. It actually reduces your perceived exertion. And when you reduce your perceived exertion, you're actually able to have a better performance. You're able to do more reps with better form. So not, so it does, it, it really helps you in a lot of different ways. It just mix it with water. It says eight ounces. I follow the rules, eight ounces, boom, a scoop, and you're on your way. You can do two scoops, but I don't know. I'm personally cool with one. <laughs> I can't imagine if I had two. Post-workout recover, I'll give you a little trick and a little tip. Some people like the chocolate. I didn't. Um, I drink the orange flavored, but whatever you like is fine. With my meal plan with plan A, it calls for me to have recover and a fruit. And I believe that's for almost everybody, even all the other plans as well. So I have the orange. So at first I was eating the fruit like on the side, like just a handful of berries or whatever. And then I was like, hmm, I wonder if I put something inside this recover. That would be good. So we have frozen cherries. So I took the frozen cherries and put them in with the orange flavored recover. Dude, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm cheating. It tastes like a cream sickle or dream sickle or whatever the thing, those things where we had when we were kids. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I literally look forward to it post-workout. So that's a little trick. The other one is recharge. And recharge is something that you drink an hour before you go to bed. And so the big question was always, well, if recover that we drink post-workout is to repair our muscles and replace the electrolytes that we just lost, what is recharge doing? Because recharge seemed to say that it was doing the same thing. Well, what we found out was that recharge, yes, helps with muscle recovery. Yes, it helps to repair those torn tissues. Because you know when you, when you work out a muscle, you're tearing the tissues. We all understand that. That's why you don't work the same muscle two days in a row, because it needs 48 hours to repair the, the torn tissues. And every time we tear them and repair them and tear them and repair them, they're building. And that's what creates the build, okay? And so that's why you don't work the same muscle two days in a row with like heavy resistance and training. So recharge, in addition to repairing the tissues, in addition to helping you reduce the muscle soreness, it also has this whole overnight while you're sleeping recovery thing that helps you actually have more REM sleep. It helps you to be, it doesn't, it's not a sleep aid. It doesn't have weird sleep aids in it, but it really helps you to have a restful night's sleep. And, and the rest is so critical. If you know anything about working out and how important rest is, that's when the magic happens. That's when your muscles repair. That's when you start to build the lean muscle um, in your body. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to trust all this. But the reach, so the recharge is like a vanilla flavored thing. And it just says on the instructions to shake it with eight ounces of water and drink it. And I was like, okay, yeah, that was all right. <laughs> it was, it wasn't, I didn't have to choke it back, but it wasn't like enjoyable. But I was like, how can I make this so it's like a dessert? Because I know I can figure out a way. Well, I take the recharge and I put it in a bowl. And I just put a little bit of water and mix it till it's like a pudding, kind of like a pudding consistency. And then I take literally, not a whole scoop of Shakeology, a sprinkle. And I'm finding that I like the tropical strawberry, but I've done the cafe latte, I've done the chocolate, whatever you got on hand. And I just do a little bit of sprinkle to add a little bit of flavor to it. And I mix it like a pudding and I put it in the fridge for about 30 minutes. And then you come, you know, cause you have to, to eat it or drink it an hour before you go to sleep. So I do that after dinner and then I come back and get it at 10 o'clock when my alarm goes off and my husband's yelling at me. And I eat it off the spoon like brownie batter or like pudding, if you will. And I swear, it's like having dessert. It's like having dessert every night. So when you kind of learn these little fun things, I was telling the test group I was doing this, and they're like, Mary, what's the recharge pudding recipe? It's really not a recipe. It's just water and a little bit of shake -out. But little things like that, and then it helps you. But I'm telling you the performance line, I mean, what was my ass on fire like for 80 days? Yes, we do a lot of work on the booty. But I never had that, like, I can't stand up and I can't sit down feeling. I knew that these supplements were working to reduce my muscle soreness. I also did Epsom salts bath pretty much every day. And I also foam rolled. Um, and I did Sundays. There's a stretch and release thing. I don't even call it a workout. And there's also a roll and release thing you can do on Sundays to help you with muscle soreness. So that's the performance line. Um, all right. Any Q&A? More Q&A. 
Eric, is stretching part of the workouts or is it on your own? It's a filler between snakes and meals, snacks and meals. Yeah, that's the other thing too. I'm gonna to answer that question. Um, I felt, I feel on workout days, I swear I feel like, and of course every day is workout day, but Sunday, you don't do the supplements on non-workout days, by the way. You don't do energize unless you need it. <laughs> to go to church, you need some more energy. Um, you don't do energize, recover, recharge. Oh, and hydrate, that was the other thing. I was drinking this hydrate in my water with my workouts. I'm like, who is this chick? Now I like love it. Um, you don't do it on the non-workout days. So on the workout days, and Lisa and I were talking, she's like, I feel like all I've been doing is drinking all day. I'm like, I know. Like you drink your energize, well you have your breakfast, then you drink your energize, then you're done the work, and then you drink hydrate during the workout, then you're done your workout and you drink to recover. <laughs> you're like, damn, I'm constantly like, oh, there's a bathroom right there in my office. You're literally, but what happens is exactly what Eric is saying is you just feel like you're constantly putting something in your mouth. You're either drinking water, you're drinking a supplement, you're eating a meal. So you don't have time to be hungry. You're just constantly like, T -t 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 -t. Um, stretching is part of the workouts. Stretching, um, warm up and cool down. And please, God, don't be my husband. You have no idea. When my husband decided he wanted to start working out with me a couple months ago ish, before 80 day obsession, he always left before the cool down. And I'm like, God, no. Nah. Like, I was so happy he was coming in for the workout that I didn't want to bitch and be that person. But I'm like, babe, like, the cool down. Like, and then, and then he was crippled the next day. I'm like, it's no wonder you're crippled because you're not judging. Please stay. It's five seconds. It's literally like four minutes. So yes, ha, ha. <laughs> it is ha. ha. He's like, We're both very type A, so there's a lot of this going on, but we love each other. Um, but no, he wouldn't, he wouldn't do the cool down. You warm up, cool down. The warm up is the same for the first 30 days, and then the second phase has its new warm up, and then the third phase has its own separate warm up. Uh, so there's three different warm ups. The cool downs are based on what you did that day. So if it was a, a lot of upper body, you know, you're doing the tricep stretching, the shoulder stretch, you do shoulder stretching almost all the time because even when you're doing lower body stuff, if we're doing anything in a plank, your, your shoulders are getting hit. But she's really good about it. And she does go fast through them, so they're maybe three to four minutes long. You can always continue to stretch even longer after the workout. Sometimes I do because I'm like, well, I need more, I need more. What else we got? I'm so sorry we're on this long, but I hope it's been helpful. I just really want to make sure everybody's ready and feels good about next week and just about everything. So Mary, is there any harm to doing like foam rolling often? <laughs> I just don't, I mean, I, I've been trained for it, but I don't know if there's like during this program, if it's. Never any harm. Uh, Autumn does it every single solitary day, she told us. And my foam roller is by my bed because uh, I just, um, whatever I'm watching before I go to bed, I just pull that bad boy out. And I've got that crazy ass foam roller. Don't get you one of these. But <laughs> Beachbody sells two foam rollers. One's a regular one, it's like flat. The other one's got all these knobs, like they're like hard rubber knobs and it hurts so bad. I mean, it hurts good so bad, but it really does. It's like having a massage and it gets in there. And, it, and you know when you foam roll, by the way, the way you're supposed to do it, a lot of people kind of do it wrong. They roll, roll, roll. Fine, that feels good. Do that a little bit. You roll until you feel the tension spot and then you sit on it. You stop and you let that hard foam roller get into that spot that hurts so bad. And because what it's doing is no different than when your massage therapist, when you want to kill them, because they just keep going into that place on your neck or your shoulder and you're like, it's got to release it's got to release that tension spot so when you roll and then you find that that spot that hurts stop and then sit on it and put as much of your body weight so that it releases that spot that's hurting underneath that's how you foam roll and let me tell you something if you do the roll and release which i hope you do because she has it's like 20 19 minutes 20 minutes um, on sunday She'll show you, you can roll your whole body. I mean, I don't know if you've ever rolled like the top of your neck. It feels amazing rolling on your lower back. Your, your IT band will send you to the moon. It hurts so bad, but try to get on your IT band on running on, up and down the sides of your legs. What else? Hey, Robin, do you have anything? I know we talked a lot today, but are you, I unmuted you. 
Oh, thank you. <laughs> I was like, how do I do that? I got you. I got you. No, I don't think so. I'm just taking it all in listening. Good. Well, thank you for being here. I know it's been a lot of Mary today. That's a lot of Mary for one day. <laughs> It's fine. Oh, my social media account, it'll kill you. That'll be a lot of Mary. <laughs> it's fine. Um, Eric, anything from you? Anything more? No. Uh, you have a lot of good information. I appreciate it. And I look forward to Monday. Yay, good. Well, look at his little accent. Where are you from again? Huh? Where are you from? Texas. That's what I hear. I was going to say Kentucky, you probably would have been mad at me. I just knew it was so. <laughs> yeah, I'm from the great state of Texas. There you are. I've got a ton of friends in Texas, lots of Dallas friends, lots and lots of them. Actually, there's a very, very heavy concentration of coaches in Dallas, Texas. I don't really know why, it just is. Um, yeah, they, they, they had like a, they have meetings here and stuff here, don't they? In yeah. Dallas. I'm not in Dallas. I'm, I'm way off in the woods, you know, probably like nine hours from Dallas, but. Oh, uh, they have lots and lots of meetings there because there's lots of coaches there. So they'll do like regional stuff there a lot. Yeah. Um, I've taken, I've taken psychology uh, in the past. I mean, like the first formula they came out with and they changed it and I still took it for like two years, but I didn't really do the workouts. You know, I, I did like the P90X for a little while, but you know, I was a lot younger way back then. <laughs> and, uh, and my metabolism was different and I eventually just kind of burn out on the psychology. And so I stopped and I kind of regret it because I took it for a month to start with a month or two. And then I stopped and then I started again and realized how good I felt. And that's what led me back to it right now. You know, is that, you know, I'm getting uh, older, <laughs> I hate to say. And, uh, you're not the I, know, only I know how good it is for me. I mean, it, it, it definitely made me feel better. And it, it, my doctor visits were better and everything was just better. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That's a great testimonial. I say this all the time and, I, and I'll say it again. <clears throat> there are no magic shakes, literally. There are no magic pills. Um, but all I can say is what it's done for me. I tell people all the time. I love that you say you take Shakeology. That, I like that terminology. It's funny. Um, Shakeology is a full meal. It is a meal replacement. It is not just a protein shake. And what I tell people all the time is I'm like, look, does it taste good? Yes. Did it taste good the first time I drank it? No. I threw half a bag away. I was like, yeah, this is gross. Cause I didn't make it right. Right. I didn't even give it a chance. But what I tell people is I'm like, look, just think of it like a daily multivitamin. Just get the shit in your body. If you can get those 70 nutrients in your body, there are nine servings of fruits and vegetables in one shake and over 70 minerals and nutrients. If you can get that in your body every day and you think of that like a multivitamin and you're, even the days you're like, I don't even feel like drinking that, I don't care. Just chug it back. Just get it in and get it in and get it in and get it in. Like a vitamin. Like a vitamin. If your doctor said, take this vitamin every day, you take it. It's the same thing. And so when I, all I can tell you is that six years in, I've not missed a day. Lisa will be the first to tell you. I've not missed a day. I get it in my body every day. And I can tell you that I hadn't been sick since the, since the day I started drinking it, with the exception of my body got the flu at Christmas. And I was like, what is happening to me? I hadn't been sick in so long that I didn't even know what was happening to my body. I was like, something's wrong with me. Um, and I used to have moments where I would wake up with a sore throat and I would just double up on Shakeology that day. I would just drink two, just but, and it would never manifest. It would never manifest. It would just go away. So when I hit, I got hit hard three days before Christmas, I went to the doctor. She's like, you have flu A. Like I had like the Mac daddy. I was out. Yeah. And I just remember laying in that bed thinking to myself, I can handle this, of course, and I will heal. But it really uh, emphasized what Shakeology has done in my, to my health. The fact that I hadn't even had a cold in over five and a half years. Uh, and the fact that, you know, okay, I got hit with the flu, but so did like a lot of the world. So, so yeah, it, you know, people, you know, they want me to give them all this. I'm not, I can sit here and give you all kind of clinical stuff. All I can tell you is what it's done for me and the people that I coach and how many people have come, 
says exactly what you just said, Eric. I, I, I drank, I took it. I don't know how you say that. I took it for a while. I, knew, I replaced the meal with it for a while and then I stopped. And then I realized I wasn't feeling as good as I was feeling when I was drinking it. So I came back to it again. And that's just a really cool testimonial of you, your body, you, you kind of did a test and your body was able to say to you, Hey, you felt better when you drank it. So drink it. And it, um, again, it's not a miracle thing, but it feels good knowing that I'm getting at least those nutrients into my body every day. And well, it, it feels good. It feels good. Where I'm at right now is, you know, I'm used to eating, you know, that they bring the kolaches, the the boudin, the donuts. I mean, it's at work every day. It's just sitting there, you know. And so I'm passing it up. I've, I've been doing that for years. And now my doctor's like, you know, your cholesterol's getting a little bit high. And I've always had a high metabolism, I'm able to burn it. You know, it's never really been a problem. But I've put on, you know, quite a bit of weight, a lot more than I want. and. Uh, uh, I just remember the wellness exams that I'd have when I was on Shakeology for those two years. I mean, they, uh, it was there was no problems. And then even even the a few years after, there wasn't any problems. But this year, it's like uh, you need to come in, and they want to talk to me about my cholesterol a little bit. And I'm like, well, look, uh, you know, I'm not going to take any medication. I, I'm a, I know what I'm going to do. All right, and I I told. Them, my doctor was and doing and he's like, okay, I've heard about this. You do that and come back in about six months and we'll do your blow work again. I'm like, okay, That's let's do that. That'll, that'll be a true test for sure. And I'll tell you with the temptation stuff, um, when I did work in, in a corporate office, uh, we had vendors, lots and lots and lots of vendors that oh, were yeah. wanting our business. And it was always shit. And, I, and here's what happened over the course of me finally figuring out this like health lifestyle thing. 10 years ago, it was hard. It was hard. I would stare at the donuts. I would stare at the junk and everything the vendors brought in. And it was hard. And, and I wanted it so bad. And I was like, just a little bit. No, I'll do a whole one or whatever. And lots of times I gave in. As the years progressed, it's funny. I, yeah, there's days I want a donut. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm a human, right? Who can pass up the blueberry glazed? I mean, I can't. Uh, I mean, hard. But I <laughs> it's very say, hard. Over the course of the years, and I really do mean this, I know how it makes my body feel. I know that it is a very short-lived high, and it hurts my belly. And so the short, I look at the short-lived high, and I'm like, it's just not worth it. So I, I'm tempted less, I guess is my point. And, uh, and I pray that over the course of the years working with me that you, you do get to that place too, and it's, you're just like, whatever, it's a donut. Sometimes I'll eat it, and sometimes I won't, but most times I won't. No, I'm passing it up now, and I I have been since you know I've got that news. Cool. Cool. Uh, it's not bad news. I mean, uh, you know, it's been, but it's just at that point where look, I need to do something now, yeah. or you know, later in life I'll be dealing with this. That's and right. so I rather deal with it right now, and I know what works already. I mean, I, I, I drank. I didn't have a coach like you, but I had psychology. You know, and okay. it was it was there for years. And I've, I've kind of feel blessed that uh, I have somebody so involved right now, you know, a group, a coach, and it's pretty awesome. Well, I, I, um, I'm glad to hear you say that. And I genuinely mean that I care about you. I feel like everyone that um, crosses my path, there's a purpose behind that. There's a reason God put you in my path and I'll do everything I can to keep you on the wagon. So we're, we're in it together. I think that's the most important thing for you guys to know is I'm doing this with you. <laughs> a lot of times I feel like people don't realize that, yeah, I'm the coach, but you guys are holding me accountable just as much as I'm holding you accountable. And I hear my phone ping, 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 ping. And I know everybody's logging their workouts. There's days where I sit here and I'm like, get up and do your workout. What's wrong with you? You know, and there's, so it helps to be a coach because you feel a little bit of pressure. Well, I'm going to let you guys go. I've taken up enough of your time. I so appreciate you jumping on live. For those of you who are listening to the replay, if you have questions you weren't able to ask live, please just post them below this video. Tag me, and I will absolutely make sure that I answer all of your questions. Um, I'm crazy excited. It's weird for me to even say that I'm excited to go through this again because it was a, it was, you know, it was 80 days. It was a journey, but I'm excited. I think I'm more excited about this round than my own round because I'm excited for you guys 
and all that it's going to do for you and how amazing you're going to feel. The days you feel frustrated and you want to vent, vent, do. Just um, let us all help you figure out a way to get out of that space. It's going to happen. Be prepared for it. But I will tell you that most of the 80 days I felt amazing. I did not feel hungry. And I, um, I'm just excited for you guys to go through it as well. So here we go. Day one is on its way. <laughs> Have an amazing night. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.